Hey guys, it's Matt here. Welcome back. And today we're doing the top 10 Android apps of October for 2018. So I worked pretty hard to find these apps. If you want to support me, definitely hit subscribe down below. But without any further ado, let's go on into the video. I'm currently using Nova Launcher and if you're curious about my wallpaper, I will have the link down below. But the first app up on my list is called Fluid NG. This one stands for Fluid Navigation and it replaces your navigation bar with something a little bit more fluid, a little bit more dynamic. It's kind of a stretchable bar and when you pull up from the center of the screen at the bottom, it will actually stretch the screen up. If you pull in from the side, it also stretches in and you can assign different tasks depending on where you swipe in. So I have it set if you swipe up from the bottom like the iPhone 10, it will actually just go to the home screen. If you swipe up and hold, it will open your recent apps. And these can be configured. There's a lot of settings. You can choose the left side, the right side, so you can set that as your back and recent, or you could just have it like I've got it, like the iPhone 10 way. I also have the back button set up, so if you swipe extra high, it will actually jump to your previously used app, which is actually pretty handy, and it allows me to be more productive. You can control your sensitivity as well as the size of this, and there's also an option to remove it when you're using the keyboard. Up next is an app called A Power Mirror. Now this one is actually a pretty neat app if you wanna cast a device onto another device. So if you wanna cast an Android device onto another Android device, you can do that using this app. Or you can even airplay from your iPhone to your Android device. So you can actually go ahead and play your iPhone screen on your Android. So there you go. <laughs> Now in terms of functionality wise, it might be pretty helpful if you're trying to show someone something or show them how to do something, then I guess this can be helpful. You can't interact with the touch screen and you can simply view it. It seems pretty good quality and there isn't much lag. Maybe you guys can find a purpose for this, but I thought it was actually pretty cool and I just wanted to point it out. Up next is a really nice weather app called Overdrop. Now there is some sort of craze going on about this app recently and I think it's just because it's super minimalistic and it has a really nice material design. It's very fluid and there's only one page and you also have a settings page which is pretty basic but it contains a lot of information and it can be pretty handy. You have this horizontally scrolling hourly weather prediction and then you have your weekly forecast and you can click on each day see the humidity you can see more information about your highs and your lows one of the best things about this app is actually the widgets it's got a load of widgets and they look super crispy super nice kind of reminds me of the samsung weather widget from the samsung galaxy note 2 but let me know what you guys think there's also some different themes you can apply for the weather app and you can change all your settings depending on whether you use imperial or metric the app up next is called News Voice. This one isn't some sort of crazy, minimalistic, insanely fluid news application, but it's a very, very good news application. It allows you to upvote certain articles so that they'll get pushed higher. You can also correct articles if there's mistakes, and you can actually change images, titles, and edit information. And then you can view the different edited information and also upvote that. So you can actually vote yourself, and it has some say from the people about what is more important in the world. The app works really great and you can swipe between your different topics of news left and right simply like this. And one of the best things is you have a settings page and you can actually adjust specifically how much of each topic you want to hear about. So if you don't want to hear anything about US or politics, you can completely turn that off. Uh, but it's a neat app. Up next is Button Mapper and I only downloaded this because I wanted to get rid of my Bixby button. I kept knocking it, it kept opening Bixby and this is the only app I found to work. So if you simply click the button, I've got it set up to open Snapchat, so that's a single press. If you double press, it will turn on the flashlight. And one of the most important things, and best things, if you hold down, it will open Google Assistant rather than Bixby. Now this does require some ADB commands, no root or anything like that. The application is free, but you can configure a bunch of different buttons, and it's a really neat app. Now the next app up is called Apps Free. If you're looking for a good deal, you wanna get some uh, some free icon packs while they're on sale, definitely check out this app. There's a bunch of applications listed here. It basically tells you paid applications that you can get free because there's a current sale going on. So all these applications are currently on sale. You also have this search filter as well. So if you don't want specific apps, then it won't show them. Um, but that's all it does. And it's a great app for that. Up next is Groupon. Now I know this has been out a while and this is a latest version of the application, but I haven't really used it much and since downloading it, there are some great deals in here for pretty much everything. Every topic you can imagine, even food, you can get vouchers and things like that and you can simply buy them in the app. 
it's really, really nice to use. You have loads of different topics to select from, and overall you can save a lot of money by using this application. You do get push notifications on latest deals, and upon clicking on the product, you can actually see various different options you can choose to buy. You can also see more information on it, and you can also see customer reviews. There's also these quick topics at the top, like travel, and you can find some really, really nice places if you want to stay on holiday somewhere or go away for a short weekend. And one of the best features is that it has a map, so you can actually go ahead and see where the best deals are. Up next is ACR. So this one stands for Automatic Call Recorder, and it's a really awesome app. I've actually been using this recently when I've been making calls to different business people, as well as when I called up about my car because it recently got damaged. And it's actually really, really handy to have a recording of that. So I can actually go ahead and play it back. I can share it, cut it. I can actually transcribe it. And in the settings, you can choose how long it records for, when it records. You can also choose whether it stores it in the cloud or on your phone. Very good to have if you make a lot of important phone calls. Up next is QuickCast. This one I found literally recently just before I made this video and I replaced one of my apps because I thought this was so good. So if you go into the cast settings, it will show you all the devices on your network that you can cast to. And then it has a list of different applications you can stream to those. So it works with Chromecast, Fire Stick, as well as your Apple TV. You can stream YouTube, Facebook, you have Nat Geo, various different TV channels, as well as 123 Movies. So you can actually go ahead and stream from your phone on 123 Movies to your Apple TV or your Chromecast. How cool is that? This is a absolutely beast app. I would recommend it. It's actually super handy if you don't want to pay for movies and things like that and you really want to find an easy way to cast. If you can't find a certain website, you can go ahead and search it at the top, but there's a lot to choose from. Now last up on the list is Live Message. If you've seen the Note 9, then you will pretty much know what this feature is. You can go ahead and draw things and it will play them back as a GIF or a small video file. You can change your colors, your pen type, the size. Overall, it's actually pretty nice. You know, if you want to share some artwork or maybe express something a little bit better or just draw something nice, then you can go ahead and do that. It saves it as a GIF or a small video. And then you can go ahead and send it to whoever you want via social media. So very, very nice app. These are my top 10 for the month. I hope you enjoyed. Don't forget to comment, rate, and subscribe. Peace out, guys.